The skies are gods, the rain, the thunder, the water, the land. My valley is a goddess, the forest. It's the ancient ways of our ancestors all over the planet, way back, indigenous healing practices. The love of the earth and earth magic, the planet itself is a goddess. Great goddess and lord of the skies, cast a circle of sanctuary about this your coven. Let nothing impure enter herein. This we ask in the name of the raven and the rose. Paganism, for centuries an underground religion. Pagans were spiritual outlaws, said by the Christians to be in league with the devil himself. Today, paganism in its many revived and reinvented forms is said to be Britain's sixth largest religion with over a hundred thousand active followers. Many practice their faith openly. There's an annual pagan pride march in London. Every May, here at Hastings in Sussex, hundreds of pagans join traditional Morris dancers and others to parade through the streets. They hold a fair in the castle grounds to celebrate the arrival of spring. It's a festival all pagans share, although it goes by many different names. Celebration of Beltane, Bialtano, Kalan Mai, May Day is very important within paganism, and I think that is for many pagans one of their favorite festivals is a celebration of vitality of life of sexuality the power of the energy of the world of the earth coming up through us and exploding out through us it's a celebration whose of uh, um, whose vitality allows us to overcome a great deal of our inhibitions um, it's about feasting it's about finding just the fresh motions of, of abundance coming back in you know, things are beginning to grow. We may have a harvest coming. We've got sunlight. Some people will say that the celebration of Beltane comes with the flowering of the hawthorn. I tend to think of it as the day when you can, without freezing yourself, make love in the forest um, or out in the meadows for the first time in the year. But the fact that that's an important part of my religion is very important to be able to be a part of nature and be myself. Um, just as the rabbits, you know, in High Scut are out there and the baby bunnies are out. It's about my own sexuality, my own vitality, my own creativity. And that's important especially in paganism because six months later, in November, we're honoring death, we're honoring decay, we're honoring the end of that cycle of growth, the end of the year. And in order to fully acknowledge death, and release and the frost coming and the darkness we need that balance many pagans today claim that they have revived the old religion which existed in Britain before the arrival of Christianity paganism in Britain today is a modern recreation but it does draw selectively upon the past reality we know that ancient peoples in the British Isles venerated women as well as men. They made them priestesses. They honored them as goddesses. And they also had male gods, which were partners of, sometimes subordinate to, sometimes superior to the women. We also have a, a sacred view of ecology in modern paganism. And that's reflected in the ancient world in which it was believed that rivers and trees and hills were literally sacred. Modern paganism has taken different routes according to differing needs of people who practice it. Modern pagan witchcraft or wicca is for those who want an intense private mystery religion which uh, gives honor to women above men and depends on the idea of making magic work, of making human power work in supernatural ways. Druidry is for those primarily who want to bond with the land itself and with uh, a sense of ancestry, a sense of kinship with prehistoric monuments. Shamanism with those who want to bond with spirits directly, often nature spirits but not necessarily, and so on. If uh, Wicca, Druidry and Shamanism are the three main divisions of modern paganism, there are others which are almost as important. There are those who call themselves Alsatru or Odinists or heathens and venerate the deities of the Old North, people like Freya and Odin and Thor.
There are those who worship Egyptian deities, Ra, Isis, Osiris, Horus. There are those who worship the ancient deities of Greece and Rome, the Olympians. And, in fact, you can pick and choose any part of Europe which calls you in its art or literature or in your roots. Modern paganism is very fragmented. There are many pagans who practice their religion alone, as well as hundreds of small gatherings. This area of woodland in the Green Belt, just north of London, has been bought by a coven of witches and renamed Ravenswood. Like all pagans, witches and Wiccans celebrate the cycles of the year, and this coven is preparing for a midwinter ritual. First of all, we cast the circle. That keeps in the magic, so that if we are celebrating for a sabbat or for casting spells, then the magic isn't going to leak away. Come, ye sentinels of the south. Come, elementals of fire. Guard this place set out of time. Guard this circle invoked in the names of the mistress and master of magic. Blessed be. Blessed be. Blessed be. And then we call the four quarters of earth, air, fire and water. They protect the circle and enhance it with their magic and they become friends and are um, an extra element to the circle that reaches out from beyond this dimension into another. It's strange when you actually cast circle, you are stepping in to another time and time has no meaning as we know it. Ladies, in your circle bright, with your web of dark and light, earth, air, fire and water, bind us all as one. Most witches perform spells, not all, but most. We certainly do in our coven. There's a thousand and one different ways to do it. Um, you could do not magic, uh, candle magic, a talisman, a spell bag. There's thousands of different ways to do every single spell. Basically, you reach out into the universe, you grab some energy, you twist it up in a knot, and you throw it. If you do a spell for money, you have to give it a route to come to you mainly through work. I'm sorry, it's really boring.